Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. Today we're going to talk about Sensionics. Sensionics, ticker symbol SENS. Today we're going to talk about what's going on with the FDA and how does Tim Goodnow know that it is approaching final approval. We're going to talk about what happens when this device is finally approved in terms of the rollout. I've previously discussed with you uh, some of the logistics of the rollout, but I want to discuss one particular headwind that they're going to face, and it's a rather strong headwind on the rollout. We're going to talk about what's going on with clinicians and with patients and what they're saying about Eversense right now. We're also going to talk about the 180 device, 180 day device, and some of the future with the 360 day device. And then lastly, I want to get to their revenue outlook and what is the stock price outlook as well. So we're going to cover those five areas and hopefully not anything else. Let's get to it. All right, let's talk about what's going on with the FDA. Of course, we don't really get insider news. Uh, the FDA is pretty tight-lipped about these kinds of things for good reasons. But sometimes we can glean things from interviews or news reports that can help us understand what's happening. So I watched an interview recently with Tim Goodnow, who is the CEO, of course, of Sensionics, uh, with some of his associates. And one of the things he said in there was striking to me. He discussed the process about what happens with the FDA in terms of the FDA asking questions and Sensionics responding. And essentially what happens is these questions start out kind of broad and multiple and then they start to narrow in and become fewer and fewer and fewer. And I think that is how Tim Goodnow is saying that he's expecting that this ever since 180 will be approved imminently. Uh, so that's about as much as we can tell. Of course, we never know how many more questions the FDA is going to ask, but those questions are getting fewer and narrower is what I understand from his interview. All right, so that's what I can tell you about what's going on with the FDA. Let's cover item number two. When this device, the Eversense 180, is finally approved within the United States, of course, remember, it's already been approved within the EU, let's talk about the rollout. Now, previously, I already discussed the logistics of some of this. If you uh, aren't aware of that, go back and watch my most recent Sensionics video. In fact, we'll put a link to that here, and you can see some of the logistics on the rollout. Sensionics is definitely ready to go. Now, there is one strong headwind, though, that they're going to be facing, and let's just talk about that. Now, one strong headwind that they're going to be facing, and Dr. Goodnow expressed this in his interview, is that they are going to struggle when it comes to reimbursement, really, and the related to the cost of this device as well. Now, there's a slide here that they presented back in November of 2021 talking about positive and growing reimbursement, and that is actually fantastic. You know, they say they have commercial and Medicare coverage for 200 million lives. That doesn't mean they're treating 200 million patients, but uh, available for 200 million lives. Now, you see over here some of the healthcare payers that are willing to uh, pay for this device. There are some big ones in here, Aetna and Humana. What isn't in here is the biggest of all, and that is United Healthcare. So, what is United Healthcare's stance towards the Eversense device? All right, what you see before you here now is United Healthcare's written policy about continuous glucose monitoring and insulin delivery for managing diabetes. This is very recent, hot off the press is January 1st of 2022. I'm just gonna search here for Eversense and we'll see what they say about this device. All right, when searching for Eversense in this device, this is the first thing that pops up. You're gonna see here this statement. Due to insufficient evidence of efficacy, the following services and or devices are unproven and not medically necessary for managing individuals with diabetes. Here we go, continuous glucose monitor using an implantable glucose sensor ever since, ever since. There are multiple other mentions of ever since within this document from United Healthcare Group. Just the second one here really emphasizes what I just said to you. Insufficient clinical evidence, and then we get down to this statement. While non-implantable continuous glucose monitors have been shown to improve patient outcomes, they're talking about things like Dexcom, similar data for implantable devices is lacking. All right, will United Healthcare Group cover the Eversense? No, the answer is no. They currently have about 15% of the market of healthcare payers within the United States. What about another big player within the United States? I'm talking about Anthem. 
The subject of this document is implantable interstitial glucose sensors. So again, they're talking about Eversense here, and they mentioned, for example, Eversense. What do they say about this? Position statement, use of implantable interstitial glucose monitors, i.e. read Eversense, is considered investigational and not medically necessary for all indications, means they don't want to pay for it either. So while they have managed to make significant improvements in getting healthcare payers within the United States to reimburse for this, really the big one that they have scored big with this is Medicare. There are still a lot of companies out there with big pieces of the healthcare payer pie that are just not going to pay for this device right now. Now this device is not cheap. Uh, we can see from this CPT code here, the CPT code is what allows people to bill for inserting this device, that the average payment is almost $2,000. Now, one thing that we need to know about this is that the average payment that healthcare payers are willing to make for these types of devices, uh, you know, for a year essentially, is about $10 per day. So we can see that currently with this device getting inserted four times per year, that that $10 per day gets eaten up with just two insertions. Now. Now, even if this device gets approved within the United States, the 188 device, we're still going to be looking at about only $4,000 getting reimbursed by healthcare payers. That's including the device plus the insertion. So just how much does this Eversense device cost? Well, this is going to be in regards to the Eversense 90-day device right now, but we can see that it's about $6,400 per year or $533 per month. So once that 180-day device gets approved, we're going to be getting closer to that $10 per day, but still not quite there, and there's going to be some out-of-pocket cost for patients. All right, enough of that on that headwind. I think you got the point there. Let's talk about what's going on with what patients and clinicians have to say. This, again, is from Dr. Goodnow's uh, interview that he had back in November of 2021. He was asked, what are patients and clinicians saying about this device? And essentially what they're saying is, we're going to hold off on getting ever since the 90-day device, even getting trained to insert it. Remember that there is some training that has to take place in order for providers to be able to insert this device into a patient's arm. Providers are saying, I'm going to hold off on getting trained until this 180-day device gets approved. And even patients are saying, mm, we're going to hold off on getting it inserted until this 180-day device gets improved. Now, what is Sensionics trying to do in terms of helping with this insertion type problem? Well, uh, one thing is that, you know, currently it requires patients to get dressed, go down to their doctor's office, wait, uh, potentially who knows how long, even after their appointment, to get this device inserted. So Sensionics is working a trial in Texas, the state of Texas within the United States, where they will have a mobile insertion team who will come around to the patient's home, insert it in the privacy of their home at their own convenience. Patients can be doing whatever they want to until the people arrive to insert this device. So that will be a trial that will be taking place and we'll see whether that expands uh, more uh, within the United States based upon this trial result and how patients like it as well as you know, just in general how it goes. All right, that's gonna lead me to item number four that I wanna discuss and that is this 180-day device, how do I think patients are going to perceive it? Well, I, I, I do think they're going to enjoy being able to have this within their arm for six months. They can have a monitor that they can take off with, uh, you know, they want to go out to a fancy restaurant or they want to go swimming. They don't have to wear this thing. They can take it off. Uh, of course, they can always shower and then they uh, reapply it to their skin after the shower. So I think they're going to perceive that very well. There still is one drawback here, and that is that they have to do a calibration test every day with this 180-day Eversense device. Now, that is better than it is with the 90-day device, where it's twice a day, but still, they're, they're going to be having to uh, keep their blood glucose monitor available to them every day so that they can calibrate their continuous glucose monitor. Now, where I think Sensionics really stands to start multiplying their revenue is when they get to this vision that they have for the one year device that will have no sensor change for a year 
No daily calibration required. It goes down to once a week. I think patients will find that much more palatable, 52 calibrations per year versus 365 calibrations per year. And there won't be any transmitter device on their body. This thing will be powered by a battery and communicate via Bluetooth with a phone, no device to wear on the arm. So when Sensionics gets to this point, that is where they're really gonna start killing it on their revenue. Now that brings me to my fifth point, revenue outlook and stock price. What is it that Sensionics is expecting with their revenue in the next few years? And what is it that analysts or people who are following this company closely think will happen to their stock price? Well, first of all, let's just go back to what some of the predictions are or have been for Sensionics and their revenue. For 2022, expectations were 30 to 40 million and getting out to 2025 we're looking at 150 to 200 million i have seen estimates even as high as 250 million so quite a significant increase there potentially 10 times the revenue within just about four to five years that's what they're expecting what's going to happen to the stock price well, this is an interesting article in answer to that question. The headline reads, FDA approval for Sensionics glucose monitor could double the stock price. Now, the author of this article goes on to try to figure out what Sen stock is worth. He uses some of uh, Sensionics current sales data. He uses some of Dexcom's price to sales uh, to help with a comparison. And he also does the uh, discount rate here to try to bring that into today's dollars. And what he comes up with as a value for Sensionics is 121% over today's market value. When we start getting to price targets, we see things like $4.13. Uh, we see things like $3.46. We'll just go to tip ranks here to see what they have to say about price target. There's only three ratings and the average is going to be five because we have a high of six and a low of four and five dollars. So. 388, we're looking at it going up to potentially the $5 to $6 range. I think that's going to happen when this 180-day device gets approved. But I think based on some of the headwinds that we've talked about and based on what patients are saying and what I think they're going to uh, not like about this 180-day device, I don't see the stock price going too much higher than that after this, at least for the foreseeable future until they really get to that one year device, that's when I think their, their revenue is gonna explode. Now I want you to keep in mind that this is a penny stock and penny stocks are risky. If you hit it big with a penny stock, man, you're really gonna hit it big, but penny stocks can be very risky. In fact, even this article from Investor Place talks about even good penny stocks like Sensionics aren't always profitable. This author of this article goes on to say, but a small company such as Sensionics can only run so fast. A surgical implant that lasts six months won't win against a service using radio waves inside of an Apple Watch. What is he talking about there? I'm gonna to touch on that just before I close. But he says, even if Sensionics achieves 150 million in sales, you're still paying 10 times revenue for Sensionics stock. You don't know if profitability compared to Abbott and Dexcom plus Apple could blow it out of the water on costs. Let's just wrap up with this whole discussion about Apple. So of course, Apple has their Apple Watch, which is you know remarkable. I, I can't believe that it can now do an uh, EKG for people to tell them what their heart rhythm is, not just their heart rate. It can tell them what their oxygen saturation is. I mean, there's a lot of improvements that have been going into this device. Well, one of the improvements that they're trying to make in future iterations is blood glucose monitoring components. Now, they're having some difficulty with that. Uh, you know, this will definitely be a new technology. But, boy, if they can pull that off, they're going to put Eversense, they're going to render it useless, Dexcom, useless, Libre, useless. All these cutaneous devices, the skin devices, they just all become useless if someone can just wear a watch and it can give them an accurate reading of their blood glucose. So please keep this in mind. Apple has a ton of money that they can spend on research and development. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about how much money you're going to invest in Sensionics. I have money invested in Sensionics. I like the concept, but I, I haven't bet the farm on this. I, there's no way I would invest my life savings into this. Investing is not 
the lottery. Investing is not the lottery. So keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out how much money you're going to put into Sensionic stock. All right, I hope these five things were useful for you. If they were, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, we really need that for our YouTube algorithm and to allow more people to be able to see this information about Sensionics. Hopefully, I've provided some information that you're not getting from other YouTube sources. Share this information with a young person in your life. Make investing a family affair. And as always, enjoy your investing.